Start game now. Hello Retro fans, this is the No Swear Gamer and today I am visited once again by the Retro Junk Box. Previously, I showed you what I took out of the Retro Junk Box and right now what I'd like to show you is both what I left behind and what I put in. Again, the Retro Junk Box is just a box that is distributed among some retro fans. It is filled up once, it goes to one place, somebody takes out some stuff, some retro stuff that they want out of the box and they put some other stuff that maybe they don't longer need into the box. And you keep kind of spreading, uh, spreading it around and people just keep on taking out stuff and putting it in. But the rules are, is when you get the box, you share what you take out, but not what you put in until everyone's been served because you want it to be a mystery and a surprise for the next person. So let me show you what I did not take out of the box. Now, if you remember in the last video, I actually took out quite a bit, a few DVD sets, some comic books, some games. There's actually a lot of stuff I did not take out. And let me just show you some of it. So here we go. Um, let's see, we have Nintendo 64 memory card by performance. We also have some Happy Meal toys. This is uh, from the Doug movie. This is the Pork Chop the dog. Brand new, still sealed. I think there's another Doug thing in here. Here it is. We got, um, I don't know if, what that is exactly. Let's see. Uh, I guess it's Doug. He looks like he's president or something. Really important all of a sudden. I thought he was just a kid. Never saw the movie. Don't know. Got some little pamphlets here. Got a guide to comic collecting. A manual for your Super Nintendo cleaning cart and this is um, just a Super Power Club kind of get you to join uh, the Nintendo Power Crew I guess all right let's see what else we had how about uh, retro Raphael Dal interesting thing about these figures is my wife and I have been watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and she's kind of interested in maybe getting a couple old figures. But the thing about the figures is, man, they look so mean. They do not look like uh, the turtles in the cartoon. I don't know if they tried to base it more off the comic book, the original comic book, but that's what they kind of look like. Now, later on, they did make some cartoon variation of the figures, but Raphael does not look like the wise cracking uh, happy guy that is on, in the cartoon series, at least the original one. So... We turn that down. Um, not sure what this guy was. It's some sort of play school figure. He kind of looks like a Cabbage Patch Kid on steroids left on a stranded island somewhere. Now, everything in the retro box is supposed to be before the year 2000. This is, I think, 2008, some uh, baseball cards. How about that piece of gum? But that is retro to get a pack of baseball cards and gums gum we also had some cassette tapes I don't even know if I have a working cassette player but we had some children's favorite Disney songs had a couple volumes of those and the Superman 3 original soundtrack so yeah so yeah I don't have a cassette player Superman 3 is kind of cool you know Disney stuff's kind of cool but no cassette player how about the novel of the original Batman movie. Well, the Tim Burton original one. I know there was one back in the 60s. So I don't know if I really would want to read this because, you know, it's a novel of the movie. I just watched a movie and ironically had a copy of the movie I almost put in the junk box. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, uh, hey, he man, it's Ram Man. Ram Man. Uh, figure he scrunches up you push a little trigger on the back and he pops up so kind of neat you know but just really didn't have a purpose for Ram Man so he gets to stay in the junk box um, let's do that later okay got a little is that I don't know rainbow bear I don't know which care bear it is but it's the one with the with the uh, rainbow on him and we have an ALF toy from Wendy's where it looks like he is pretending to be a genie. So ALF Tales, so I'm figuring each ALF figure had to do with some, you know, like, a story that Disney probably also made in the movie. Got a 
Don't know if it's Hot Wheels or not, but the little, it's like a car, but it's a robot. You know, it's got a pink gun because he's secure in his masculinity, I guess. Or maybe it's a girl robot. I don't know. All right. Lots of stuff. Yeah, uh, I think this came from the guy before me. He's in Milwaukee. And lots of these little pins. A lot of car-based pins. Milwaukee pins. So not a huge, huge car fan or Milwaukee fan. Nothing wrong with Milwaukee. Just don't have a big thing about it. Okay, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. If you remember, I took a copy out. One of the reasons I took a copy out was to kind of thin the box a little. It actually had two of these in there. And I figured, you know what? Can't have too many copies of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, right? And I wanted to make some more room to put stuff in. So there we go. Another game I already have, Road Rash for the Sega Genesis. Really kind of fun little racer there. Uh, some more of those car things. Looks like some patches and stuff. Again, not quite my cup of tea, but there you go. Uh, the little, this is the RF switch for an original Nintendo. I think you could also use this for maybe a Super Nintendo. I think it would also work on that. Might even work on, uh, I'm not sure, they might even work on the Nintendo 64. Okay, Risk for the computer, CD-ROM game. This is a Pokemon map for Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red. And Skate or Die! have a copy so it stays in the box these were just a whole bunch of cards you got some magic cards not into magic um, not into you know sorcery kind of stuff uh, in general got Pokemon cards and got a lot of uh, Marvel trading cards so decided to keep those in the box you can just see Harry Potter game again not a big fan of the Harry Potter stuff so stays here what else do we got down here feel some more uh, Game Boy games we got a Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 which I'm sure is an okay game not a skateboard fan so there you go another uh, Pokemon Game Boy video man these you should watch one of these video cartridges sometimes they're terrible yet oddly appealing just poor quality but it's on your Game Boy <clears throat> I could have kept him to destroy him, but I left him in the box. That will be torture enough. A little, I don't know if it's Huey, Louie, or Dewey, or Gooey, but it's one of the DuckTales nephew guys. This is a little, I think this came in, I'm guessing Taco Bell. I remember Taco Bell did a thing, and it's a Bobo Fett bobblehead that's on top of a ship. It's very bizarre. Because it's a huge head and on top of a tiny ship. Okay, never mind. Anyways, that stayed. Another Game Boy game, Rugrats the movie. This caught my eye at first. This is Yoshi Island Super Mario Advance 3. And I believe there's actually a story behind this on the Retro League. If you go back to old episodes with Nick. And I think he tells a story about how he bought this. And it ended up being a bootleg. And I think this is a bootleg game and I'm not a big fan of bootlegs and actually I, I have this on my 3DS I got it with the uh, ambassador program so you can kind of tell because this the way it says Game Boy Advance is not the same as most cartridges I don't know if this one yeah if you can see the way they say Game Boy Advance the Game Boy is a lot bigger in advance and it's just different font so these are you know this is the real deal this isn't, I'm not saying the game doesn't work, but it's bootleg. I'm not a fan of bootleg, so I passed on it. This was interesting, too. It's a Simpsons Bart vs. the Space Mutants Nintendo manual. And the thing that's interesting to me is I think someone actually put on this little binding on the edge. I don't think it's how it was originally. I could be wrong. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they did that originally. But I could be wrong. I don't think I ever saw any manuals like that. Some VHS tapes. I have not used a VCR in a long time. We got a Van Damme cyborg movie and a Pokemon cassette. Uh, cassette. Um, neither one I'd be interested in, even if it was on DVD. Just not my cup of tea. That's okay. Plenty of retro good stuff to go around. I actually have. This is interesting to me, but I have some. This is an old Atari catalog. Love that art, Pac-Man. So you know, these are cool. Oh, that's scary. How about that haunted house? Really helps you use your imagination when you look at those graphics. 
So just, uh, I have some of these already. This is, um, I think it's missing a cover, but this is like some sort of, oh, it's a, it's a manual for Donkey Kong Country. So, oh well, didn't need it. Some comic books, we have X-Force, X-Men, X-Shield. You know, they had some good ads. I flipped through them, but uh, wasn't too... I did take some comics. Captain America. I'm sorry, X Captain America. Everything's going to be X. X comic book collecting. So I actually have some old comic book price guides. I don't know what good they do anymore, but here they are. You know, if you want to find out what some stuff is. Let's see. Spooky Haunted House number one is worth, uh, I guess, six bucks in mint condition. So there you go. Now you know. Um... Another comic book that was based on the first movie of Pokemon, Mewtwo Strikes Back. So, nice artwork, but not a Pokemon fan. So, back in the box. Hey, Jungle Rat Rob, there you go, Pokemon. You like that stuff, right? We'll see. Um, okay, we have a Dragon magazine, which is like, I think, a Dungeons & Dragons kind of thing. I don't know. But, um, cool artwork. Uh, just not my cup of tea again, you know, and that's just I have said cup of tea a lot of times haven't I so Yep, that's what nerds looked like back in the 80s So yeah We we dress better now and this uh, this is this is probably the coolest thing I put back in I don't have a record player, but look at that. This is a queen single we are the champions and we will rock you. Played in every sports arena after every championship game. So there you go. MST3K. Did someone seriously write Mystery Science Theater 3000 on this thing? I guess they did. 1977. Won't tell you how old I am. This is older than me. CLB in the house. All right. So there you go. This is what I did not take out the retro junk box and in a minute I will be back and I will show you what I put in the retro junk box some really cool stuff so uh, be back in a moment all right and now to show you what I'm going to put into the retro junk box first I want to start out with my favorite in television game and that is burger time it is that now the label is pretty bad but the game is a lot of fun have a few copies so I thought hey why not let's share some burger time love so burger time for the Intellivision all right next up I have a couple DVDs of some retro goodness uh, first of all I got Gumby this has I think um, yeah eight episodes of Gumby in them if you remember Gumby from back in the day uh, really retro there have also a DVD that has an episode of Heathcliff and Super Mario Brothers from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but it's just a cartoon. And also have a DVD that has an episode of Gadget Boy and Inspector Gadget. Gadget Boy actually came out much later than Inspector Gadget. It was supposed to be kind of a revival. Uh, the same voice of Inspector Gadget does this little boy, and actually it's more of an annoying show. Even though it's done later, I don't think it looks as good. But Inspector Gadget is pretty classic, so I thought I'd throw that in there too. Also put together just a little bag of a bunch of goodies. Got some old uh, baseball pins. I have a uh, this pin right here I think is from, well, let's open it up and look inside, shall we? So, got some Pogs from The Lion King. I have this, this I had many years ago. It's a hot ice cool stones brooches and it's the Statue of Liberty back when the Statue of Liberty was a, had a little more um, popularity not that it's not still popular also put in just uh, it's not retro but you know what is retro is getting tickets and tokens at arcade so I just threw in a couple tickets for my local family fun center alright let's see I got a couple pins so some are uh, baseball players. Let's see, we got George Foster of the Mets. Have a US 88 uh, Olympic pin. We got, how about that, Raleigh Fingers. How about that mustache? And a Popeye pin. Pretty sharp, huh? That's a nice looking pin. All right. Got some posters in here. 
got a Sega Genesis poster, folds out. I think it basically makes uh, this image really large. Got another Sonic the Hedgehog poster, I believe it is. And I have some old uh, G.I. Joe promotional material, like when you got G.I. Joe stuff, sometimes you'd get like catalogs that would have the figures inside and the vehicles. And sometimes, you know, you could send in proofs of purchase and look at that, you could get your Sergeant Slaughter uh, WWF style, LGN style figure if you send in enough of the uh, flag points, I think they were. And just more of the G.I. Joe stuff. And I got a, uh, a Sega Master System poster that has a lot of the games on one side and like, a, you know, now you're take a hold of the Sega Adventure and it's got a poster in there. Got some Space Harrier going on and boy, Wonder Boy does not look good in that one. But still very retro, very cool. More G.I. Joe stuff and a... Uh, Sega catalog just has a catalog of games. I don't want to take it out right now. Let's go on to the next thing. Uh, one of the guys on the Retro League is named Hughes and is a fan of demo discs. So I thought I'd throw this in. This is a PlayStation PS1 demo disc. And you can see some of the titles there. Destruction Derby and such. Madden 96. Back when 96 was new. So definitely retro there. Have an old book. How to Win at Sega Genesis Games. Also has a little section on uh, Turbo Graphics, so this was before the internet. So if you want to master shove it, now you can, and you can hang on Super Lee with Super Hang On. And also, I believe it also had some, uh, some like Captain Silver. That's a Sega Master game, um, Sega Master System game. So it has some hints for the Sega Master System as well. Pretty cool. And then in the back has some Turbo Graphic 16. Alien Crush, stuff like that, so I thought that was kind of neat. How about a Choose Your Own Adventure book right there, The Mystery of Echo Lodge, number 42. They had some really interesting illustrations. No, I don't think anywhere in the story do you meet the critter that has half the head of a hawk and half the head of a cougar, but the only way to find out is to read, so Choose your own adventure. The end. The mystery of your rescue from Emerald Iron remains unexplained, but for the rest of your life, you believe in ghosts. <gasps> so, hopefully you get a good adventure when you go through this. Alright, um, just some old Nickelodeon pencils back during the slime era. Slime era. So you got some of the slime logo. This is a really interesting thing, if nothing else. I actually have another one of these. That's why I'm getting rid of this one. It's a Nintendo e-reader. And what it is, is you plug it into your Game Boy Advance system and you slide these cards through this little card reader and you can actually play games and such on there. And I'm actually going to throw in a pack of um, four packs of new games. We got Pinball, Tennis, Donkey Kong Jr., which I, I really enjoy, and Donkey Kong 3, you know, uh, somewhat underappreciated. Some people don't even realize there's a Donkey Kong 3. But you slide the cards in. They come in packs of, I want to say, like, I don't know, five cards, and you have to slide each side, um, like the top side and the bottom side, so two sides of cards. So to play these games, you have to slide a card about, slide it about ten times to uh, get all the information in there. But then it gets stored into this little thing, and you can, you can play them without sliding, even if you turn it off. It's a full Nintendo game. Of course, it's a smaller Nintendo games. Very interesting concept. It did end up bombing, but someone's going to get some enjoyment out of it, I hope. And then last but not least, sort of the prize possession of what I'm putting in is this right here. It is the Atari Paddle Plug and Play two-player system. Okay, you can actually do two players. I have another one of these. That's why I'm letting go of this one. Otherwise, I would not let this go. And I think, let's see, did I? I included batteries. How nice is that? I'm a nice guy. So this is very cool. Contains some games like Warlords and um, Pong, of course, and other games. The only sad thing is it didn't include uh, Kaboom because it was third party. But if it was made by Atari, it's on this thing. And it's very fun to play. And these paddle games, you just cannot get the same enjoyment unless you have the paddle. And, of course, since this is uh, more modern and, well, and uh, you know, made uh, newer, that, you know, the paddles actually work. Where sometimes the old paddles, they just don't do 
justice anymore. They get the jitter problem. These do not have the jitter problem. So all you got to do is plug it to your TV, grab another person or play by yourself, whatever uh, you desire. And it is a great little collector piece. I don't think this will last too long in the junk box. So that's just some of the stuff. Well, that is all the stuff I'm putting in the junk box unless I find something small. And uh, I believe that is it. Oh, and I also found some uh, right here. I found this too. It snuck out. I didn't take this. This was in the junk box, but I forgot to show you. Mary Kate and Ashley's pocket planner. There. That just made your day, didn't it? Mary Kate and Ashley's pocket planner. Lots of fun. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And once again, this is the No Swear Gamer telling you to have a good night.